Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to add a collider to a GLB file so that you can click on it in Decentraland and have a, an event. So what I'm going to start with is a, um, I'll start Blender up here. Pretty much any recent version will do, I think. Uh, just click anywhere and that will go away. The first thing you want to do is you want to click on this uh, box that's in there by default and hit the delete key so that you have an empty scene. And then we're going to import a GLB that we want to add a, um, a collider to. So you do file import GLTF which includes GLBs and uh, I think the one I want to use is in the downloads directory. Yeah, this guy right here. And um, now what we need to do is we need to add a second, um, excuse me, a second uh, object to the scene that is just a cube sized correctly to surround this object or, or live roughly in the, in the space of this object. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm in object mode. That's good. I'm going to add a mesh of a cube. Now that's bigger than it needs to be. So I'm going to resize it. And to do that, I'm going to come over here to this cube thing that I just put in. I think, the, um, and the, here is the, uh, here is the uh, the object that I'm working with, but the, here's the cube itself. It needs to have a name at this level that it that contains the to be a, to be a collider. It needs to um, where's the rename here? Uh, maybe I just hit F2. Yeah, it needs to have a suffix string at the end of the string that says collider, just like that. Under underbar collider. And that will make Decentraland treat it as an invisible object. It won't, it won't show the box, but it will make it a collider. All right. And then this, like I say, this is too big. So let's resize this thing. And uh, I have to remind myself how you do that. Um, uh, in 3D modeling, this should do it right here. Uh, this guy right here, scale gives me controls here for uh, resizing it in each of the dimensions. So I'm going to grab this thing and shrink it down this way to it's just kind of the size of the, um, of the, of the thing. And similar to this, uh, shrink it in here. Um, that's reasonable. Now I want to move it up so that it, it covers the whole thing. So I click on the move controls and I click on this arrow and pull it up. And now uh, if they click basically on where that is, they'll get, a, they'll get a collision and they won't be able to walk through it either. Um, so that's pretty much it. Now um, I could save this as a Blender file, uh, save as a Blender file somewhere, like back in my downloads. Um, uh, the name of the thing was Glen Rose. Uh, it's called Glen Rose. Um, but that isn't what you need actually in, but that would what you need if you want to come back and edit it some more. You just open up that Blender file. But to export it back to a GLB, you pick File, Export, again, GLTF. Um, I have a habit of always opening up the geometry and saying Apply Modifiers. Occasionally I'm working with a GLB in which the modifiers are really important. So I do that. and. Um, I am not going to say uh, include only the selected objects because I really want the collider and the uh, original mesh. So um, I'm going to put it right over the top of this one again. Actually, I think I'll rename it um, like V2. Uh, export um, and then what do I want to export it as? By format, by default, looks like it will be. Oh, it says it would be a GLB by default. That's what you want, binary GLB. You don't want either of these other formats. Um, so the GLB puts it all in one file. It gets you what you want. Um, 
oops, I did the wrong thing here. <laughs> I renamed the original file. And down here I want the V2. This is, I'm sorry. So here's the original file. Here's the, uh, the name I'm going to export it as. And let's uh, say that that's it. And it'll work. Thank you.